Hi, I'm Guru from IT for Change. I read recently on Twitter that in November and December 2020, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be visible very close to each other in the evening sky, and this is a very rare occurrence. If you see the slide, it says that this kind of alignment happens only once in 20 years. But even the way the two planets are arranged at this point in time. is so rare that if you wanted to see a similar phenomena earlier we would have to go right up to 1226 more than you know nearly 800 years back so this is something really exceptional to see jupiter and saturn which are the largest planets in the solar system as you know so the chances of seeing them with the naked eye is that much higher so we will see jupiter and saturn as a double planet as the article mentioned using a free and open source software called stellarium in case every anybody wants to see the article the link is given on the slide here so i'm going to open stellarium on my computer and i'm going to set the location as bangalore and the time as 6 pm on 21st of november 2020 but before we open stellarium let's take a quick look at what stellarium is stellarium is a free and open source software as i already mentioned it can be installed on your computer it's available on linux as well as on windows but you can also open stellarium directly online on stellarium-web.org it's also available as a app on the android phone what we will do is having open stellarium we will set the date and time to november 21 2020 6 pm we will set the location to bangalore and then we will search for jupiter and then we will search for saturn Once we find the Jupiter or Saturn object in the sky, we will select the object in Stellarium by using our mouse. We'll click on it, and then we can use slash to zoom out. So if we press slash a couple of times, what we have selected will zoom out so that we can see it very closely. We can enjoy close views of Jupiter and Saturn. To come back to normal view, we have to do backslash. So let me open. Stellarium is already open on my computer, and on Stellarium to set the location, I need to move my mouse cursor left of the screen. When I move to the left of the screen, the menu option comes, and you can see that the topmost option is the location window. So if I click on that, I can select and establish any location I want. So you can set the location where you are currently based in, and if the place that you want doesn't come when you type. it in the search here you can give even latitudes and longitudes so any spot on the earth we can set that as our current location by providing the latitude and longitude information i have set it as bangalore because that's where i am based second thing to set is the time so the second option on the left menu the left menu comes simply when i move the my cursor to the left side of the screen the top most is a location window as we just now saw the second is a date and time window and I've already set it to. It is set to twenty second of November, and it's six o'clock. I've paused it as that. I can set it as twenty first November also. Doesn't make such a difference because over the next months we will be having this phenomena observable in the night sky. Now the next thing to do is to search for the objects, and that again I've already searched for it, and it's visible here. But if I wanted to search for it again, I go to the menu, and the fourth option on the left side. there is a search option if i click on it i can actually search for the object that i want so i'm going to type saturn so when i type saturn saturn comes to the center of my screen now it's already highlighted and if i click on slash it makes it bigger so when i clicked on slash once we can already see saturn with its satellites around it and we can also see the three rings for it, which it is famous i click slash one more time and Saturn is zoomed in still further so i can observe the satellites and the planet in closer proximity to go back to normal view i'll click on backslash and now i can see that saturn is still in the center of the sky night sky from my vision but i can also see moon and jupiter so there were articles which also said that it's very rare for moon saturn and jupiter to be so close to one another in the night sky moon is of course much larger because it's simply because it's closer to the earth although in terms of size it's nothing compared to jupiter or saturn now i'll click on jupiter and you can see that jupiter is highlighted and if i click the forward slash i can see jupiter 
we also saw the rings around saturn we can see jupiter's close proximity and again if i do backslash the objects again become back to normal size i can also make the time move faster so i can click on forward you know fast forward and the date and time will move faster and uh, like 2x 4x i can make it faster and faster so this is a night sky i'm already at 7 o'clock i'm into 8 o'clock now so you can see as the night advances the movements of these planets and movement of the moon across the night sky so let me pause here and go back to my slide so just in terms of fact it's of course the largest planet in the solar system and although its mass is 1000th that of the sun it is two and a half times all the other planets combined in the solar system and it is one of the brightest objects which is visible to the naked sky in the night sky and very unusual fact jupiter can actually cast a shadow when we stand in its light on earth saturn is also a very interesting planet it's more famous for its prominent ring system which comprises of most ice particles the earth has one single large satellite which of course is the moon as we all know saturn has at least 82 satellites so it's very interesting it has that's a very interesting fact about saturn and it has a very low density although its radius is 9 times that of the earth its, den its density is so low it's actually its volume is more than 95 times bigger than that of the earth so both jupiter and saturn are extremely massive planets in the solar system so we watched jupiter and saturn using stellarium but what you can do is you can use stellarium to actually identify these objects in the night sky so if you're not very familiar with the night sky you can actually keep stellarium on on your computer on or on your phone go to the terrace of your apartment or your or your home that you're staying in or if you're fortunate enough to be staying away from a city then you can probably get a better view of the night sky and there are teachers who actually try to get students to be with them to watch the night sky together and activities like this can really build a lot of excitement and fun and joy and love for science and the method of science which is actually to see phenomena and to make deductions from that and to build models so that's really astrophysics although it's a very small part of our uh, physics textbook physics syllabus but i think it opens out a huge uh, perspective huge panorama in the mind and eyes of the students to look at and explore this beautiful big universe that we are in and the earth is so small and i think that gives a different perspective on life itself and stellarium as a tool is really wonderful to help us explore the galaxy and explore the universe you can use stellarium to observe different phenomena in the universe and you can use it to stimulate discussions with your students for example this particular viewing of jupiter and saturn can create discussion possibilities like relative size of objects why is it that the moon looks so much bigger what is the size of the moon and the size of the jupiter or saturn and why do they seem different in the sky and also the relative movements of planets this is a very important uh, physical phenomena observ observed by scientists in europe and in other parts of the world to actually track the movement of different objects in the sky and make deductions uh, of various kinds you can also use stellarium for investigating various other phenomena also so any time you are aware of a particular phenomena that's actually visible from your own sky or from the sky of any other location on earth for example if you are to know that there is going to be a total solar eclipse which is going to be visible from paris in a particular year on a particular day you can go to stellarium set your sky to paris and the date and time as required and you will be able to observe the solar eclipse as well so stellarium allows you a lot of flexibility in identifying phenomena that occurs and configuring it in stellarium so that you can see it comets like halley's comets planets galaxies all can be seen through stellarium so in this way stellarium allows teachers to engage with phenomena which would be very difficult to discuss with students otherwise because when the school is working it's a daytime and pretty much you can only see the sun in the sky and lot of objects that are visible in the night sky are not amenable to discussion at that point in time and stellarium allows us to bridge that particular gap so stellarium is a tool that can actually convert every computer that we have into a planetarium so even if you're not living in a place where there's a planetarium doesn't matter you can create a planetarium using your computer for yourself and for your students